Hello everybody, this is Bud and let's start the virtual machine open SUSE Tumbleweed um, In this video we continue the system D configuration here and we will need some help by a good old friend that is known as Mr. Polybar That's right, Mr. Polybar <laughs> is uh, will be paying us a visit in this uh, video and I have actually went ahead and already installed Mr. Polybar I don't know why I'm saying Mr. Polybar it's known it, Polybar is the name of the program you know that uh, and it's a very popular status bar taskbar kind of thing so I have installed the Polybar package uh, but the video will not really be about Polybar and configuring Polybar blah 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 it's uh, more of a way to illustrate uh, an issue that um, you might stumble upon uh, while doing this systemd configuration stuff. Um, as you can see, polybar can be started with the command polybar. You can also use other command line options like yeah, polybar. By the way, is one of these one of the few commands I know that have a R option that will automatically reload polybar when the configuration file changes. Uh, speaking of that, I have also made some slight modifications to the default polybar config here and added this is the i3 workspace indicator. It's slightly different from the uh, build or from the default workspace indicator. So this is specific to i3. It's part of, of the default polybar, so you can just enable it basically. You can see here internal i3 is the name of one of these modules. Whatever, it doesn't matter uh, what about the configuration of Polybar here, it's not really important. You will see soon. Uh, let's create a systemd unit for this Polybar. So I bring up D menu, it's a bit annoying here now that D menu overlays the Polybar, but whatever. Leaf pad, unit, speedrun, description, it's, uh, it's a Polybar. Uh, service exec start it's enough here with polybar for our example here so uh, polybar and um, restart on failure and we should also not forget to add the part of graphical session dot target perfect save that in our systemd configuration directory here dot config systemd user polybar service of course save all right and we get a notification that the systemd daemon is reloaded because that stuff is just working for us now uh, so i closed the polybar process i started from here let's uh, try our systemd our brand new system CTL user start polybar dot service Kajonga very nice stop seems to be working nice let's add this now to i3 or to our i3 service so it will automatically start when we log in here so once polybar dot service and sure now um, maybe we should also disable the xfce4 panel here since we are not uh, yeah we'll just be annoying with two bars um i guess we log in and log out to see if this works log out log in and i got a polybar but it is actually a bit broken. Uh, open a terminal here uh, and go to workspace 2. And then we can open a leaf pad here. Why not? Workspace 2, workspace 1. I think you can see what's, uh, what's wrong here. Uh, we don't have any workspace indicators. It would have worked if we, have, if, if we had used the default indicators. Maybe I can open the polybar config uh, just quickly so we can... So I can show you that polybar config ini. Um, let's see now. Or this really doesn't matter. 
I copy pasted all of this from the Polybar wiki. Here, here we see module I3. That is actually a module only for the workspace indicators. And it is specific to I3 and uses the I3 IPC to get the correct workspace names and stuff. You get, if you are using I3, it's much better than the uh, X uh, workspaces module. Uh, but it doesn't work, so that's not so good. Um, it's great, except that it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the reason it doesn't work is if we open i3 service, is that um, the polybar process here have started before i3 was ready. And that is because system D, this is one of the benefits, but it also makes things a bit uh, tricky sometimes. Uh, system D wants to start everything at the same time and, and launch everything asynchronously. Uh, and only it only cares about the order if you care about the order and have specified specific uh, um, a specific order or something like that. And we will look into that a bit here now, since it is uh, causing this problem. Uh, we can also verify that this is really the problem simply by, well, I guess we can look at the status first. Let's make this tabbed also so we get a wider uh, terminal. So let's do system CTL user status polybar. And here, not really anything interesting in these logs, but you can actually get more log messages by using the journal CTL command, which is also part of system D. One thing we haven't really said anything about, but you know, these status uh, reports that you can bring up from commands, they have some cool things here like memory usage and CPU time. So how many milliseconds of the CPU uh, that process have, have used. And if we bring this up again, we will see that the, it, this have gone up a bit, you know, because it constantly uses CPU. That can be a good thing to know about um, if you want to keep track on how bloated uh, programs really are and stuff like that. But journal CTL, same thing here. Uh, specify user to, to note that we are that we want uh, to look at our user units and then unit is one option there are lots of command line options for this and it, it, it it's like a its own chapter in a way um let's see here unit is is uh, one option and then you can specify a specific unit that you want to view the log for so polybar if we just do this i'm not sure what happens then we get the default um you see I think we now got all, all, uh, all the logs from this uh, module. And the thing is, I was experimenting with this before, so that's why we have some old, um, old messages here as well. I would suspect here we have some errors that are quite recent. That disabling module i3 reason could not find socket. That is the problem here. And it is because Polybar was started before i3. Um, all right, let's try to fix that. Um, there is, when you are using these wants, uh, then you can also use uh, before and after. And I think they are quite self explanatory what they mean. And they mean this service, i3 will um, start before or after a specific service has been started here. So um, we want i3 to start before polybar because that would um, then we can be sure that that the IPC socket is ready, right? But this will not work. I know it will not work, but we will do this anyways. Save that. Uh, we can log in, log out, I think is the best thing to do. Start, no, no workspace indicator. Uh, still. And 
there are two good solutions to this. The first one is to do this, and this will work for other programs as well. Like say say it was a different window manager. I, I'm not sure about Polybar here, but I think it has support for BSP WM, and it probably would have the same issues if, if we would set set that combo up uh, in a similar um, configuration here. Uh, what we can do to solve this is actually edit the i3 configuration file slightly. Let's open it. Config i3 config and I like to add these here at the bottom actually when you because it kind of indicates that this is the last thing we want to do when we parse the configuration is to exec automa automatically ex execute some commands um, and the command we want to execute here is uh, first you should also always use this because it's an annoying thing in in i3 let's not get into it but ex exec no startup id and then we say system ctl user start polybar dot service so as you can see we start the systemd service from within the i3 config now um, and when you do do that then you can be sure that i3 is ready the ipc is ready for all commands you start from within uh, the configuration so this is one solution to this and um, yeah, I guess you would have to do this, something similar for other window managers. Um, to test this, we simply go back to systemd, open the i3 service, and then we can remove this once polybar from the configuration altogether, because now they are started in the i3, uh, or by i3, via the uh, i3 configuration. And it's kind of obvious that Polybar will start after i3 now, since it is really started by the process itself. Um, let's log in, log out, and see if it worked. I think it did. Hello. Now we have Workspace Indicator. It works. I go to Workspace 2. You can see it's a 2. Go back to 1. Now we have two indicators here. Great. Cannot click them. I really don't really know how these work, but um, so that's solution to the issue number one. Uh, drawback with that is that now we have all of a sudden uh, our uh, systemd configuration is now scattered around two different systems. If in a way, so uh, you have to jump back and forth between the i3 config and the systemd configuration theoretically. It's not a big deal uh, when it's just these two programs, but you can imagine, uh, let's say this happens for something else and then you add it to like, uh, I don't know, just as an example, let's say you could start program with Thunar and then you add some system D starting there and the system D starting here. It, it could potentially get messy if you use this method. So the, the cleaner way to do this, in my opinion, is to we open i3 config again now and then we remove uh, what we just added we don't start polybar from the i3 configuration comment that line out and then we open i3 service again and then we re-add these guys once polybar with service and we want to start it after or before is what we say i3 starts before this service and then we have we change the type of the i3 service to notify save that log out log back in we got a polybar, we got a workspace indicator that works. Cool. Uh, but as I think the first example is probably much easier to understand what, how that worked, what we did there. 
The second one is a bit more cryptic and why, uh, what is this type notify uh, service? Um, let's open man page for man uh, system d dot service and see what they say about the uh, 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 notify type. Behavior, behavior of notify is similar to exec, which is kind of the default one. However, it is expected that the service sends a notification message via SD notify and then man page three here. So here, this is another systemd related man page. Some of them start with SD by the way, so it's it's probably well over 200 man pages. Uh, or an equivalent call when it has finished uh, starting up. Systemd will proceed with starting following units after this notification message has been sent. If this option is used, uh, notify access C below should be set to open access to the notification socket provided by system D. Uh, if, if it's missing or set to none, it will be forcibly set to main. And we can just do that, have it set it to, to the default here. I know that works, at least in this case. So, might be a bit much here to, to digest, but um, when you set a process to be of the type or a, a unit to be of the type notify, then it's expected that the process, the main process in our case, uh, i3 leaf pad file open i3 service. So type notify, then it's expected that this process, the main process of the service will send a signal via SD notify. This is uh, important. So this will not definitely not work on most programs. It has to be like supported in by the program itself needs to send a special signal to system D. Uh, but I3 actually does this and we can even look at um, look at that uh, pull request that is responsible for this. I, I, it's very much related here and <laughs> stay tuned because this this will get good. You will see. Um, um, I wanted to open, I created some show notes earlier, there it is, show notes, and we have the link to the pull request, uh, let's make it tabbed, let's open Firefox, and sorry it's a bit slow here in the virtual machine, but it's, it's fine, it will work. Um, then we open this GitHub pull request address and it's on the i3 main um, main repo here. It's a pull request that got merged um, on August 2021 so it's about a year ago so uh, and it's uh, this is included in the current version of i3 4.20 so that's also good to verify that you have that at least 4.20 i3 version 4.20.1 is what we have here, so it's no problem, but you may be on, on some distributions, might be stuck on 4.19, I don't know. Um, and it was created by this guy, Vincent Bernat. And he explains here why this would be useful, just as I did, that if we if you use Notified, then we can make sure that we start stuff after i3 is actually ready. And if we look at the source uh, for this patch, it's only one single line. And here we can clearly see that SD notify function being used here to notify system D that I3 is ready. It does that just before it enters uh, the actual event loop here. And this is done in the main, um, main function of, of I3. And it's not super important that you understand exactly uh, uh, how this works, uh, but in short, it really uh, makes sure that um, i3 is ready. And that means that before um, and after will work properly. Otherwise, before and after almost means nothing in the sense here in, in system D. It's like then it makes sure that it starts polybar 
after i3 but that still might uh, result in in um, i3 not being ready and polybar is a very lightweight quick program to start i3 is a bit slower so even if uh, we start polybar after the process i3 started polybar will be too quick so to speak uh, now when I think about it, there is actually a third solution to this that I never use myself So I have never tested this, but we can try to do that because you can actually add like a, a startup lag uh, To to the service uh, options. I have never done that, but I'm quite certain you can so maybe we could look at it quickly here Go to polybar um, And let's bring up a terminal man system d dot service i guess might be unit but i think it's in the service documentation and then let's quickly see if we can find that option xx condition stop restart here time start sec configure the time to wait for startup so that's almost like a sleep you know sleep five semicolon command that would kind of be the equivalent here um, so that's also one solution sometimes that you could use i never use this myself because it feels like if you st start doing that then that uh, could also result in in like slower startup time it's good that everything starts at the same time most of the time um and that is kind of everything I wanted to show you about this, really. Um, or maybe we should also look at this way of doing it. it it's extremely similar here. Uh, but um, let's do this, open i3. So now we specify in the i3 service that we want polybar and that i3 should start before polybar we could actually do this the other way around we could still say that i3 service here want the polybar service but then we could add um, and say after in this one and i3 service and i think we need the wants uh, option as well then wants i3 dot service it will not uh, create like an endless loop here that i3 want polybar and polybar want wants i3 system d figures this stuff up this stuff out and here you can see now we actually decluttered our main service file here by removing that before because you can imagine may maybe you want to fine-tune a lot of these services and and it can get a bit messy it it all depends on on how you want to set it up here personally i actually like to add it to the main uh, service like this and lastly of course this is also kind of good to to keep in mind that instead of creating a polybar service here remember we created um, a couple of videos ago go we made we made a custom xfce target which is a group of um, a group of related services. You could also use that in with before and after, and specifically now when we have uh, type notify set up in with i3. Uh, so I think that's everything I would would like to say about that. But let's uh, cycle back to this uh, Vincent Vincent guy here because there. This is where this this gets good. Uh, so Vincent Bernat, he, he seems to be quite uh, knowledgeable about i3, system D, and stuff like that. And this is actually how all of this started for me. Is uh, I would like to say that it was when I saw this pull request, but I did. I, I remember when this pull request was created in, in July. I, I saw it because I subscribed to all pull requests to i3. Um, but I didn't really feel, I didn't understand what this was. I, I was almost against it actually when I first saw it. It's like stop adding like system D shouldn't be uh, like support in I3. It, it didn't feel right and I didn't really understand what it was talking about here. Um, but then just a couple of or short after 
Vincent published a article on his blog and I actually think I started subscribing to his blog after I saw that pull request here. And then he made this uh, blog post about his uh, journey, his i3 journey. <laughs> Uh, because he, he used to use awesome window manager for 10 years he writes here and I have mentioned this before but it's worth mentioning here again because yeah credits where credits do you know um, and this is a really good article describing his i3 setup and it's not about so much about system D you can see he uses Dunst and Polybar and Picom, Rofi and he has this massive Python script that extends i3 quite a bit it, completely custom uh, there's lots of unique uh, solutions in in uh, vincent's rise here but i remember when i saw this uh, blog post and i saw hey system d service manager and i just read this saw this stuff here i i i understood what he was uh, trying to do here and i i got interested that maybe this is a nice way to manage the x session so i actually looked at uh, vincent's um, uh, Vincent's uh, dot files which are linked here in the article but uh, he also have this repository i3wm configuration uh, and here he have all his systemd uh, user units here as you can see and if you open these you can also see where I have gotten my <laughs> inspiration in quotation mark I have basically just ripped this off in many ways here um, here we can see uh, when he stops uh, i3 exactly the same thing as we do user stop no block graphical session target so um, th that is what I did I, I kind of copied his configuration but uh, changed a bunch of things to yeah use the different programs that I use myself and yeah poked around with this uh, uh, for, for a couple of days and then um, and notice that hey this was actually quite good and then I have just kept kept it kept this configuration it it's um, it's a great way to, to do this and it's much much better than what I was doing before with like I think I had three or four different startup scripts that were linked together some were started by Xenit and then i3 started a script which in turn started another script and it was a mess and it was slow and it was never 100% working ever and now with this system D setup it does so this is a really good resource to uh, see how to set this up as well I haven't published my own uh, dot files but I think I will actually do that soon um, so I really wanted to, to uh, make a shout out to Vincent's uh, stuff here and his blog is really good as well he also ha has a good lock screen um, configuration thing like XSS lock, i3 lock, that stuff maybe we can look into to something like that in a later video here I've been thinking about that um, but uh, for now I think we are good uh, this or for now for, for this video we are good I just wanted to show you this type notify and this is all thanks to Vincent or oh, also by the way it's just because it's funny uh, if we look into Vincent's system D i3 service you will see something you notice something here Vincent is actually not using this himself he's not using the notify type on i3 uh, and this is something that only applies for, for what we are doing now. If you are creating your own custom i3 systemd <laughs> service unit, uh, this is not supplied by i3 or any distribution. This is something you have to set up yourself. And I don't think anyone is doing this beside me and Vincent really. And Vincent even contributed to i3 got his changes included here which is not the easiest thing to do uh, they they refuse many um, uh, pull requests uh, but he doesn't use the feature himself so I, I am actually suspecting that I might be the only person in the world <laughs> that that uses this so what does Vincent does do he 
he does what I showed you first there uh, and just um, start uh, start a target from his i3 config. So if you look, this is the i3 configuration. We can see here that exec always no startup id exec system ctl user start no block i3 session target. So that is in this target he have included the units that he um, that are dependent on i3. So so um, and in one way it also makes sense uh, to do this you know when it is because the these units in this target should be specific to i3 meaning it is kind of it may it, it makes sense it's, it definitely makes sense to also configure it from the i3 config but it would be kind of weird to start as we do now polybar from the i3 config it's it I, I don't know it's it's minor details uh, what's important is that sometimes you need to pay attention to uh, um, the order different units are started it might cause like minor issues like this uh, like a workspace indicator not working all right uh, we end this video here um, and to be honest I don't know that there is that much else uh, to show you about this uh, system D X session if you look at Vincent's configuration as well there isn't that m m much that is uh, different or or um, new things there are some minor things here one thing I noticed is that in all his target units he adds binds to instead of part of as we do I think that's the proper way to link targets together like this so that's one thing and there are some some small things like that but there are no important major things that I feel uh, we, we have to look into now so now what's left to do really is just to finish this uh, rise right and enable uh, that's that's my plan is is to maybe make a longer more uh, comfy rice <laughs> video and uh, enabling or trying to recreate my my actual configuration that I use my, my on my daily driver <laughs> Linux machine um, so thank you so much everybody for watching and enjoying I'm really it, it really makes me happy to see that uh, this has been uh, interesting to a lot of people have gotten great uh, feedback and I am uh, really proud of um, yeah of you guys for <laughs> for the tone in the comment section that I was really uh, worried that this could kind of escalate into the yet another system D flame war thing you know but it feels like that is that war uh, is is done in a way you know uh, I think system D actually won um, and uh, things are, are starting to settle down in, in, in a way in that <laughs> in that dispute people aren't that uh, um, hysteric about about uh, system D as they used to be a couple of years ago and I thought maybe I should save this a bit for that rising video uh, where I thought uh, I could rant a bit more about yeah my thoughts about system D because I I like system D but I also think it's kind of ridiculous there are so many weird things going on with it that it's it's like uh, it, it's not the most awesome uh, software in the world but it's it's definitely not the worst and yeah talking a bit about things like that and what really happened why did it become such a drama or was it really a drama you know yeah you can think about it yourself also uh, you know there have been many other uh, uh, shifts in open source world gtk2 gtk3 python2 python3 X11, Wayland, and so on. Uh, Pulse Audio, Alsa, and now later Pipewire. Other shifts here, which, which yeah, I thought we could talk a bit about that, you know, um, and um, how the System D 
fits into that uh, story. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you in the next video.